So obviously, I'm a fan of both of your work, and I know everyone watching this interview will have seen everything. However, if someone is watching, they've never seen anything you've done, besides Asteroid City, what's the thing you want them watching and why? Of something that you have done yourself? Yeah, like uh, from your previous, oh. from your resume. Oh, how interesting. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Um... Maybe Under the Skin, because I just, I think it's a great movie and I love yeah. obsessed with Jonathan Glazer outside of the work that I, we did together. But we it was such a, I think it's such a unique movie um, that I would, I want mm -hmm. as many people to see it as as, as possible because it's a kind, of, kind of a little hidden gem. So. Is he a nice guy? Yeah, he's yeah. a great guy. I loved his video he did. Remember that rabbit in your headlight video he did for the band Uncle? <laughs> Tom York, remember that one? Yeah. The guy I could sit back there, it's great. And what about you? I would just say, I don't know. I don't really have it, I can't. Uh, I, you I, have to. Yeah, okay, I have to, sorry, I won't leave you. Uh, um, uh, someone who's never, I would just encourage them to <laughs> see, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something. Um, uh, uh, fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. Sure, 100%. Yeah. Um, Scarlett, individual question for you. Um, what was it like to finally get the call from Wes to do live action? Um, it was great. I was, it was such an, un I was in the middle of the quarantine time. And so it was basically the best call I, ever re yeah. I received. Um, it just felt hopeful and like, yeah. So, you know, there was something to look forward to, you know, this kind of like North Star thing and that light it. The end of it's a very true. weird tunnel. Um, and uh, I was excited to read the script and uh, know what the world was that, you know, that he was sort of playing in. And then to get to have creative conversations with him over that time too, just felt like so, it felt like I was working on something, you know, developing and building something, which was again, like a really <laughs> welcome distraction. Um, so it was very exciting. Uh, for both of you, uh, a lot of people watching this will be Wes Anderson film, uh, fans. And I'm curious, what do you think might surprise them to learn about the way Wes works on set or in pre-production or just things in general about Wes that maybe they wouldn't know? I think it's uh, as, as, um, as large as this cast is and as many people as it took to, to make the movie and, and, and how many people are involved, um, I think it's... You know, it's surprising to see how much he prefers an intimate setting to actually start shooting the movie. He doesn't like, like, prefer to have just the actors and, you know what I mean, like to keep it kind of, and I think that that's like, but a, a very, uh, he goes, he really makes that clear and it's really cool because then he never has to, he doesn't have to raise his, he's just right there. I think that's the thing. It's the feeling of intimacy in a movie that looks, you know, it's got all these people and it's a, on a big, in a crater and it's this big thing, but it's, the process feels intimate. I don't know what would surprise any, anyone. I don't know what their assumptions are yeah. about Wes, but I, um, he's, Wes has a very um, light, positive, yeah. excitable attitude um, on set. He's not, you know, sometimes if you think of an auteur, they seem kind of like, serious and, you know, concentrated and very particular. The set's really quiet, whatever. Wes is very lively on set. Um, he makes noise while you're working. You can hear him laughing and yes. making noises. Like he's really <clears throat> excited by the process and he somehow has more energy as the day goes on. He's so invigorated by work and he just mm -hmm. works constantly and he comes off the set. He's so excited about the work yeah. that you did today. That day he's already prepping for the next day, it's just a, it's a, he's got so, he's so engaging yeah. and very funny and very vivacious. One of the things I'm curious about is, I would imagine Wes is very specific with the way he wants you to deliver dialogue and and also you're acting to the camera move and he, you know, everything is so specific. What is it like as an actor where you are sort of trying to, you know, bring his vision to life versus maybe finding it on set with a director who doesn't really exactly know what they want. I don't think Wes knows exactly, yeah. at my experiences, he doesn't actually know what he wants out of the performance. Mm -hmm. He know, you know, the word, the, there's a certain, you know, the dialogue is the dialogue. And so that, those are the kind of parameters you have. This is, or if you have to hit a specific 
mark, which, you know, is normal, right? You have to say a specific mm -hmm. mark. This maybe is a little bit more particular, but really the, everything else is up for grabs. So your whole interpretation of what this means, the color, it, you know, how it's colored, the nuance of it, the pause, whatever, it might be sometimes, you know, he's like, take a little air out of it, or, you know, he wants something to mm -hmm. be delivered in a more, you know, with a certain kind of speed, or this can be thrown away or whatever, but he's actually very open to, you know, what all filling it, filling all, all of the shading in of, of, of totally. all of it. I think um, that's what he like, that's what he loves about being there. When you describe his onset vivaciousness, that is the thing. It's like this, the feeling of what's going to happen. You know what I mean? He, he's a, as she says, he loves that. I definitely have to talk about the fact that you're voicing the spot in Spider-Verse. So I just want to say congrats on that. Thank you. Um, I want to know what can you tease for the upcoming third movie, which I know is very limited, but what can you tease? And also, um, I've talked to Lorenzo about this Transformers 1, and you get to voice a character in this big CGI, ILM animated Transformers movie. What can you tease about Alita? I believe that's a character. Yes, I'm playing Alita. Um, Damn. What can I tease about it? Well, I'm working with Josh Cooley, who is an incredible writer, director, who I adore and have worked creatively with in, in other weight capacity. And um, it's, you know, I think the film does, it doesn't look like anything I've ever seen wow. before. It looks so cool. It's just got such every, it's the texture of it is so, is so awesome. I think yeah. it's, and it, because Josh wrote it, it has, it just feels very, I don't know. It feels, it's got a great like dramatic feeling about it. It's funny, but it's got so much heart to it. Like all of his stuff does. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I think it's a different way of approaching the, this, you know, uh, um, IP, I think it'll, it'll, I think it stands on its own. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, my, uh, I, there's not much I really can say, but uh, I'm just excited about it. And uh, I'm, it's a fun, it was a great experience. I loved working with them. It, we started doing that before this movie. Um, so it's been a long time. You can't time. say one single thing? Well, I can say, uh, what I can say. What single thing can you say? I can say a few things. Um, Bigger, better, holier. No. Yes. And by holier, or not, you mean there's, whole, there's plot holes. Yes, I, no, I have there's holes in my body. I, um, I, um, uh, yeah, it's just, I think it's, you know what the truth is this. It's uh, really fun because it's, uh, as you know, it's part one and two. And so it's, it's a really cool, um, rare opportunity to get to tell one big story and have the time to go into all these things and, and to let these characters really develop. So I, I, look, I can't wait for it. I'm so excited. On that note, I'm going to say thank you both for your time. Thank you.